Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, Aloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Antonio Hernandez, Dragon Matrix 7, Excelsior, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Soren Gotlib Michelson, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. <laughs> Again, not something I really planned for, but I needed to unwind after finishing yet another series, so what better way to relax than a traumatic tale of terror and talking animals? That is how normal people relax, right? I mean, I don't really have much of a reference point, but I'll assume that's right. Just like last time, uh, I'm going to keep this pretty casual. It's basically just two and a half hours of story time with Retcon, broken up into two episodes for the sake of my sanity, I suppose. I will admit, I've been uh, very curious to see what changes our decisions back in Episode 1 have wrought on Episode 2. Uh, as aforementioned, I've played through this a couple of times, but not with this set of decisions. So, we will be uh, exploring that together. Oh, yes, recap, please. That should highlight all the important stuff. The Long Lost Cousin. The Bad News. The 26 hours of bus rides with countless late-night stops and CD depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. Afraid! Hey, Dustin. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. That is still inappropriate. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Ew, gross. She hunts cryptids. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of Stella's flashlight, while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. Pain, rot, decay. You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. Aw, oh, Duke. Come on, you, whatever your name is. Grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of her harness. Your eyes fixate on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulder. Stella, keep an eye on him for us. Make sure he doesn't get into any more trouble. Welcome home. My grandmother called them ditchlings, and they were a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. From the relative safety of your cousin's uncomfortable guest bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else, though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments. For now, you're safe, and you're warm. 
Tuesday morning awaits. Wake up. You open your eyes. The sun has risen. The birds are singing. You are still alive. And for now, you are safe. Your gaze wanders across the room to the window and the woods beyond. You wonder if the monsters are lurking there right now, ready to pounce as soon as you leave this crumbling estate. A familiar unease settles in your gut, tangling into a knot of anxiety wriggling as the events of last night play out in your head. You can't help but remember Duke, slumped against a tree, pieces of him scattered across the clearing. You're not sure if you'll ever feel okay again after what you've seen, but you can't stay in bed forever. Hunger pulls you from the clammy depths of the mattress. Well, let's lighten the mood a little. You open the drawers and check on Dustin. Oh, good, he's still here. Human is back. Morning, Dustin. You are a sight for sore eyes. How you doing today? Dustin, feel good. Had a productive night. I see you have a bread now. Yes, Dustin found a bread. Dustin also ate a bug last night. Good night for Dustin. Fantastic. So, uh, have you met Fru-Fru? Monster. Yeah, yeah, that does sound about right. Hey, uh, Dustin. Can I talk to you about something horrible that happened last night? Human can always talk to Dustin. What happened? Oh, boy. Um... The woods are full of horrible monsters. I watched a man die last night, Dustin. Hmm. When Dustin gets scared, Dustin pretend to be dead. Maybe if you pretend to be dead, monsters leave you alone. Maybe human's friend also play dead? Oh, boy, Dustin. You, uh, sweet summer child. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe Duke was really, really, really good at playing dead. Hey, it was uh, nice to catch up, Dustin. I'll, uh, I'll let you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, you gently close the drawer. Ah, uh, that does make me feel better. Good old Dustin. Great, the doll didn't move during the night. Maybe it isn't haunted after all. Though, after everything you went through yesterday, that's hardly a consolation. Look, I'll take what I can get. You turn back to the rest of the room. You creep towards the window, careful not to be seen by whatever might be lurking in the garden. Whoa, hold on. What? That... Uh, for a second, you thought you saw movement. It could have been an animal. It could have been something else. Whatever it was, it's gone now. Well, that's unsettling. Maybe you'll head out there and investigate after you finished waking up. It's probably a good idea to check in with your new friend. You can't imagine she's holding up very well. Hmm. Hey, uh, how are you holding up? It might take her a minute to get back to you. In the meantime... I guess we'll uh, get dressed and head downstairs. Round two with Tabby, I'd imagine. Oh, and uh, Fru-Fru. Time to start your day. You're back in the kitchen. Fru-Fru eyes you from her favorite spot on the counter. Her pupils dilate and her tail twitches. Yep, that's a cat. I see you are still here. How unfortunate. 
Yeah, um... Gretchen sends her regards. Oh, I forgot to turn off the overlay. So, Sebere Vitijor, that creature has not returned to whatever vile pit of hell it crawled from? Merde, truly ours is not a kind god. So, uh, old friends, I take it. Um... Fru-fru, I don't suppose you, uh, know anything about ditchlings. Even if I did, why would I ever tell you anything? And for the record, no, I don't. Now stop bothering me. Hey! Did you know the police called me this morning? You've only been here one day, and you've already had a run-in with the cops. Okay, so maybe she'll take us more seriously now. Hmm. Look, I had a really rough night. Can you cut me some slack? A man died right in front of me, and those woods are full of actual monsters. No, some old farmer went missing, and that's it. Don't let Stella get you all worked up over this. She has that effect on people. Fine. Did the cops say anything about Duke? Did they find the body? Body? They didn't say anything about a body, but apparently he never went home last night. Gosh, I can't imagine why. And they had quite a few questions about you, Retcon. And before you ask, don't worry. I told them that you're an upstanding citizen. Um, gosh, thanks. You seem unfazed by this. A man's dead, Tabitha. Some old farmer disappeared after going hunting in the middle of the woods at night. So what? Something like that was bound to happen eventually. And frankly, you're lucky it didn't happen to you. Do I seem unfazed? Maybe I am. I'm just sick of dealing with other people's problems. Just make sure nothing like this happens again for the rest of the week, alright? I gotta ask, what is up with you and Stella? We just have a history, that's all. I don't need to explain myself to you. All right, all right. I know you're under a lot of pressure, so I'm sorry. Good. Nope. I've got to get to work. But listen, you'd better stay out of trouble today. I want you home by sunset. I don't want to hear complaints. Just do what I ask and we won't have any more problems. Tabitha takes a few steps towards the door. Sunset. Your cousin Huffley exits the kitchen. Her footsteps fade down the hall, ending in the characteristic creak and slam of the front door as it opens and closes behind her. Once again, you are the only human in the estate. It seems you have a habit of bad first impressions, none. The cat chuckles mockingly. Oh, I love you too, Fru-Fru. Uh, a text from Stella. Hey, Retcon. Thanks for checking in. Hope you're alright. All things considered, I'm doing okay. Not great, but hanging in there. Up most of the night on cryptid forums, but no good answers yet. I'm at the library if you want to join. I have scones. Scones, say no more. And that's that. Time to start your day. Ooh, let's uh, check out the garden. That sounds like proper horror movie logic. As your eyes wander to the garden door, you shudder, remembering the brief glimpse of 
something you saw from the upstairs window. It was probably just a raccoon, in a hood, but the uncertainty of what you saw gnaws at you and compels you to investigate, if only to prove that it was nothing. At the very least, you don't see anything now. Oh, good. Must have just been the wind. You wander farther into the garden, trying to pinpoint the spot where the thing had been lurking, if indeed there had been a thing to begin with. Hmm, pretty. The garden is peaceful, but undeniably eerie. Here, more than anywhere else, you're surrounded by the ghost of what this place used to be. A greenhouse sits in the midst of the overwhelming greenery, unreachable from years of neglect, its glass clouded and cracked. Statues reach out from within seas of weeds, as if begging to be rescued. And most strikingly, behind a pair of rusted metal gates, at the very peak of the mountain, sits a graveyard. You can just make out a few of the headstones, the scarlet name carved deep and proud into their faces. You notice what a good view someone would have of your window, if they stood where you're standing right now. Really now. You crouch down, pushing aside the greenery to examine the soft earth. A boot print. A big boot print. And what looks like some kind of viscera. Raccoons in boots. Your thoughts turn to the specter from the night before. You snap a quick photo, just in case it comes in handy later. You send the photo to Stella. Look what I found in the garden across from my window. No way that's Tabitha sized. You head back inside. Time to figure out what to do with the rest of your day. Ah, might as well get things started with another epic sandwich quest. Sure, Stella might have scones at the library, but scones are later. PB&J is now. You quickly scrape together the ingredients and gobble up a delicious breakfast. Hmm, seemed a bit more epic last time around, but I guess that's that. Okay, well, uh, Fru-Fru, it has been a true pleasure. I suppose I will see you tonight. The walk back to town is much less pleasant today than it was yesterday, when you didn't yet know that the woods were full of monsters and strange men who know your name. You stare anxiously into the darkness between the trees, searching for any signs of movement. But the woods are still, at least for now. The autumn-tinged mountains, sprawling for miles in every direction, now feel less like beautiful scenery and more like the walls of a cage. Your phone buzzes in your pocket. Jeez, that's creepy. All the more reason to come to the library. Look who I found at the library. She said she was up all night thinking about the video, adding you to the group text. I'm only here because it's quieter than the store, or was, lol, and I'm trying to figure out what animal that could be. I don't buy into this Harbinger of Doom stuff. We know what animals they are. They're ditchlings, and they are Harbingers of Doom. Sounds like they're having fun. <laughs> On my way. Almost back to town. You make it to town in one piece. No creatures jumped out at you. No scary men blocked your path. The sight of other people is comforting, helping you forget the things you've witnessed. As if they happened to someone else. Oh, hey retcon! We were just talking about you. 
I stopped by Sybil's to pick up her new tea blend and, well... You're the biggest thing to come into town since the coal mine. Folks have been absolutely buzzing about you. You went out with, uh, Stella last night, right? Did something happen out there? She barely even waved when she walked by. Um... Yeah, I think we can trust Avery. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Stella and I went into the woods to try to find a skunk ape, but we ran into something way worse. Actual monsters. Sybil said that they're called ditchlings, but whatever they are, they killed Duke and have been mutilating the local wildlife. Whoa, whoa, slow down. Duke is... dead? It's true, I'm afraid. It's awful. Has... has anyone told Bo? Yes, he's taking it as well as you can imagine. I'll be going up to check in on him today, the poor lad. I can't believe you had to see that, Retcon. I tell you what, I I'm on break for the next half hour. How about you swing by the diner? Winnie can fix you some of Sybil's new blend and try to calm your nerves. It's chaga and lemon balm. It's always helped me on the bad days. And if you need to talk about what happened, I'm all ears. Anyways, it's up to you. See you around, Redcon. See ya, Sybil. Take care now, Avery. I'd better get back to it myself. I'm glad I was able to catch up with you this morning, if only to see how you're holding up. Please, don't hesitate to stop by if I can be of any help. Actually... Why doesn't anyone in this town seem to know or care that the woods are full of monsters? People tell a lot of stories up in the hills, especially city folks who wouldn't know a bear from a Bigfoot. No offense, of course. But I'm afraid that means most folk aren't going to take your claims very seriously, at least not until they see what you saw with their own eyes. Be gentle with them, Redcon. I'm so sorry to cut our conversation short, but I've got things that need tending to. Stay safe, and God bless. You probably have a bit of time before you're needed at the library. Well, Avery did just invite us to the diner, so I guess we'll go there. You head towards the diner. The diner is a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with the tantalizing smell of breakfast. Ooh, one fancy city coffee, please. Also biscuits and gravy. Looks like it's mostly new faces, though I do see the guy with the paper is still here. You slide into the booth across from Avery. Hey there, stranger. Before you can exchange words, Winnie sidles up, a fresh mug of tea in hand. Heard you might need this. The answer to 29 down is oink, by the way. What? But the clue is pen sound. How is that the sound a pen makes? Wait, pen like pig pen? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? I don't know why you even bother with those things. They're just going to frustrate you. It's just something to do to fill the time. But maybe I should switch to Sudoku. When he leaves Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. So, uh, what the hell happened last night? You can tell me. I won't judge.
Well, I could tell you about last night, but what if you don't believe me? I'm not here to judge. I'm here to listen. You hesitantly take a sip of your tea. It tastes like you're drinking mold that someone has tried to unsuccessfully spruce up with lemon balm. Yeah, yeah, that's chaga. It is, um, an acquired taste. <laughs> you take another sip. The flavor is strong and slightly unpleasant, but something that tastes this bad must be good for you. Wow, not a lot of folks take to chaga so quickly. It's a fungus that grows on birch trees around here. Supposed to be super healthy, but it makes for a challenging drink. Color me impressed. You spill the beans. Glad to have someone to talk to about the horrors you've witnessed. Aside from Dustin. Wow, that is some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distant. Monsters in the woods. I may not have lived here long, but I've never heard of anything like that happening around these parts. I can't say I like the thought of it. Oh, you don't like the thought of monsters? Now that I think about it, when the cops came in for their morning coffee, they, they mentioned something about going out to the woods to look for someone. It must have been Duke. They seemed so disconnected from it. I figured it couldn't be very serious, but... Wow. You seem, uh, really engrossed in that book, Winnie. Can I help you with something? I suppose it would be natural for folks to be curious about me. Even before the Duke thing, so doubly so now. I don't get it. They saw Stella's footage. They saw what happened out there. But it feels like so far all they've done is hound me. Hey, I don't know if it'd help your anxiety, but even if they think you did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come in here every day, and I feel like I know them pretty well by now. And let me tell you, they have no follow through. I can't tell you the number of complaints they've just, like, dropped after a day or two. And I'll vouch for you if they try anything. Nothing you just said was actually reassuring. So, uh, I hadn't pegged you as a transplant. Where are you from? I moved here from Charlotte. Gosh, three years ago now? Maybe a little more. I've lost track. Come on, that's still North Carolina. <laughs> Aunt Winnie offered me a place to stay and a job. And who was I to pass on that sort of generosity? To be honest, it still feels like I'd just moved in. Practically everyone apart from the coal folks grew up in this town. So it's like I'm the perpetual new kid. Don't get me wrong, folks here are plenty polite and friendly, but there's a shared history I'll never be part of. Do you, uh, regret moving here? I don't think I have a choice to have second thoughts. I'm not going anywhere without Aunt Winnie, and there's no way she's leaving this place. Why'd you, uh, leave Charlotte, if you don't mind me asking? Nah, it's cool. I was having some issues with my folks about my education, which, uh, wasn't great especially since I was still stuck under their roof. When my aunt heard about it, she offered me a job and a place to stay. And the rest is history. Hmm. Maybe you're more at home here than you think. 
Stella really talked up your party yesterday. I don't think she'd have done that if she didn't think you were really part of the town. It could be that you're getting into your head about fitting in. Hey, you know, thanks. I hadn't actually thought about it like that. Okay. We're on the case, but I hardly know where to start. Let me know if you hear anything. Definitely. Oh man, it looks like my shift is starting. Hopefully the Chagas had a chance to start working its magic. Yes, my stomach has exploded. The diner is where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes on around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. Avery slips out of the booth, giving a friendly half wave before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner, ready to continue your day. This is your first time seeing the general store in the light of day. A young man sits at the table by the register, too preoccupied with his phone to care that you stepped in. <laughs> Yep, you uh, know we've got to do it. The young man looks up at your now quite pungent bag of peanuts, curls his lips in disgust, and returns to his phone. Psh, so rude. Kids these days, am I right? Uh, hi, I'm Retcon. I just got to town yesterday. Yeah, I know. Mom told me. So, what's your name? Miles. What you doing on your phone there? Games. You probably haven't heard of them. Uh, hey, if, um, I wanted to buy something here, do I, like, talk to you, or... Miles sighs. I guess, yeah. Kanika decided to skip work today, so of course, whatever plans I had didn't matter. Just take the chips. I don't care. Um. While I do appreciate free chips, uh, wouldn't that be stealing? If Kanika cares about running this place right, she can hire someone else and let me live my life. She inherited the store. I don't want to keep getting suckered into working here just because I'm her brother. We make most of our money on bulk orders anyway. A bag of chips doesn't make a difference. Um, you know, I would still prefer to pay for these chips. I, I insist. I'm not ringing you up. Take them or leave them. Cool. That's a solid work ethic you've got there, kid. You're gonna go far. I believe in you. Okay, well, we're not going to argue with them. We'll see if we can pay Kanika later. You grab a bag of salt and vinegar chips, the best kind of chips, from a nearby shelf. It will sustain you in the coming days. Cool. You know what, I am not going to entrust anything important to this kid. I will uh, see you around, Miles. Miles doesn't respond as you turn and leave the general store. Yep, that sounds about right. You enter the former town hall. Cat. Cat. Also, what in the world am I looking at here? What is going on? I am missing some very important context here.
This is an interesting library. What once must have been a stately foyer has been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted reference collections and reading areas. Oh, right, right, it's the old town hall. Oh, hey, you made it! You head over to Stella and Kanika's table and settle in. You made it. Glad you could join us. I agree wholeheartedly with Stella. I am elated that you're back. <laughs> Gretchen, you sweetheart. Did you send my regards to that foul feline? I did, in fact. Let's see. Don't worry, Gretchen. I told Fru-Fru all about our little adventure last night. Wonderful. I hope she stews on that for a long, long time. Did, uh... Did you just try to talk to Gretchen about Tabitha's cat? It's not the first time. He talked to Gretchen yesterday and said some wildly insightful stuff. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he can actually talk to animals. One paranormal mystery at a time, please. Morning, Retcon. You look tired. You can't just tell someone they look tired. Oh, shoot. Okay. I was really hoping I could just pay for the chips, and... I feel like snitching on Miles would hurt our chances of ever actually getting anything useful out of him. No, no, let's, let's give him a pass. <laughs> yeah. The estate isn't the easiest place to get a good eight hours. I never realized houses could get so... windy. And all those dreadful creatures in every nook and corner. It is a wonder you got even a wink. I can only imagine. That place was already falling apart the last time I was there, and it's been years. I can't believe that place hasn't been condemned. Not that there's anyone here to do the condemning. Yeah, well, welcome to Backwoods America. Anyways, I guess we should get started. Oh, before I forget, we've got to talk about that photo you sent me this morning. Kanika, check this out. Retcon found it in Tabby's garden this morning, right in line of sight of his bedroom. What in the world is that liquid around it? It looks like pus. Gross. You know, the, um, the opossum that lives in my dresser says that two people live at the estate. I thought he might not have realized that Perlan died, but I wonder if this is who he was talking about. <laughs> Those expressions. Tell Stella that I was the one who broke Mr. Jingles. Maybe then she'll finally understand the connection that you and I share. Kanika and Stella silently glance at each other. <sighs> All right. Look, um, Gretchen wanted me to let you know that she's the one who broke Mr. Jingles. Okay. Oh my gosh, you can actually talk to animals, can't you? What? Mr. Jingles was the name I had for that little snake toy Gretchen had as a pup, which she broke. I kept asking, who broke Mr. Jingles like I didn't know it was her? Okay, if this is going to be a recurring bit, then uh, I might as well just play along. Yeah, welcome to my life. So, do you, uh, do you guys think it's Wayne? That creep who keeps coming around my mom's tea room? He snuck up on us last night and called Retcon out by name. And those boot prints match up with a mining getup. I am so glad the two of you had me there to protect you. Whoa, apparently I missed a lot last night, huh? I wonder if there's any connection between that guy and what happened in the woods last night. 
like what? I mean, I don't have anything specific, but we do have the whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore. And this photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about those splatters on the ground. If he's sick, maybe it's from those creatures you encountered. Oh, there's a thought. Hey there, strangers. And literal stranger. <laughs> yep. You extend your bag of peanuts to the librarian in a gesture of friendship and good faith. Um, I don't know what to say. Is this a gift? I'm allergic to peanuts. No, not seriously allergic, but they give me a rash. Hey, Oscar. This is Retcon. You know, Tabby's cousin. Oh, I should have known you were Scarlet. You looked so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was still a little kid when she left. But that Scarlet resemblance, it's, uh, strong. Um, I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian, and only librarian. Oscar's amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a, a little jealous of what the kids around here get to grow up with. They don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple of shelves of boring books donated by old people. Y'all are too kind. But speaking of kids, have uh, either of you seen Rosalina around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but... She hasn't been answering my texts, and uh, I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. You know the crowd she hangs around with. They're good kids at heart. I'm sure they're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. I went up there plenty of times in my days, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. Uh, out of the loop here, what's the old Maxwell place? It's this great old abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were teens. I can't believe I used to be so reckless. The floors in that place were like Swiss cheese. I should really have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. Okay, well let's not worry Oscar unnecessarily. Unless we have to. I'm sure she's fine. You might not want to let her run off like that anymore, though. It's not as safe as it usually is around here. Uh, is that so? Kanika's right. There's some weird stuff going on out in the woods. That's actually why we came in today. Have you ever heard of creatures called ditchlings? They're a type of cryptid that shows up around places on the brink of disaster. They kind of look like if the Pillsbury Doughboy was a creepy pasta. Kanika's mom told us about them last night after seeing some footage we got in the woods. Ditchlings. Doesn't ring a bell. Dang. Worth a shot. Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? <laughs> I love her comprehensive notes. That is fantastic. Well, they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Uh, should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll get back to you. I'm gonna go nab some more books. Behave while I'm gone, Gretchen. Oh, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old gal. Well, ain't you the sweetest thing on two legs? <gasps> Gretchen! My heart. Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, drool leaking from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. 
but she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something unusual going on in those woods. <laughs> Forget the ditchlings. What the heck is that? Um, shoot. Again, we do not want to alarm this poor guy unnecessarily. He's got a kid. We have seen that there are consequences to um, how we interact with people. Okay, let's let's go with this one. Whatever's out there in the woods has been brutalizing the local wildlife. I don't think it's safe. I'm going to try to call Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble. And we'll make sure to keep our eyes peeled. Thanks, Kanika. And Redcon, if, if you see a 13-year-old girl with black braids and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? Yeah, I can do that. Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Got him. Just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right. Got our snacks, got our source documents. Let's get this research party started. This is going to be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. And Gretchen. I'll be doing most of my research online. You never know what kind of weird biases the folks writing those books might have. Whatever you find online might be biased too, you know. <laughs> no kidding. Which is why we cross-reference things. Yeah, you're right. It's good to cast a wide net. Guess the books are up to me and Retcon. Reading awaits. Oh no, not reading. I hate reading. I'm well known for my hatred of reading. That's why I never play any games with text. Oh, just three books. That's not too bad. Veins of Scarlet. A history of the Scarlet Hollow Coal Mines. Forced into retirement at age 50 due to a war injury from his time in the Indian Wars, exacerbated by a short stint serving as a captain in the Confederacy, Silas Scarlet also lost his eldest two sons to the bloodiest of wars, leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the country. Andrew Scarlett built the surrounding town into what it is today, with expensive stone buildings, a bustling main street, and overseeing it all, the elegant Scarlett estate that was, until 1889, the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region. Culminating in the tragic collapse of 1918, it was found that Charlie Shaw, the co-manager of the mine, had loosened security measures to increase production during World War I, resulting in a fatal collapse and the deaths of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. Ooh, yikes. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlett's eldest son, Theodore, who had taken over for his aging father during the bustle of the war. His brother, Enoch V. Scarlett, managed to pull the mine from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So, this is how your family made its fortune. I see, I see. Well, that's cool, we've got a... What looks to be a county map in the back. I recognize... Okay, I recognize some of those county names, but that one says Transylvania. It's been a while since I've been to the Carolinas, but that might not be entirely accurate. Silas Scarlet, soldier, woodsman, leader. Silas Everett Scarlet was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlet in 1818, one of 12 siblings. 
He grew up in eastern North Carolina during a tumultuous time in the state's history, and not much is known about his life before he joined the army in 1836. He quickly rose through the ranks, in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness, for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlet. The federal government granted the now Captain Silas a tract of bounty land in exchange for his service in the Indian War, and he settled into the hills of North Carolina in 1841. That land would become Scarlet Hollow. But it started as a simple log cabin, built by Silas' own two hands, occupied by his family of ten, Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children. Logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hills, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount, cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus, he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's now famous coal mine. Yeah, you're finished with this one. If you say so. And saving the best one for last, Appalachian Folk Monsters. A few entries catch your eye, by which I hope you mean the whole book. Wampus Cat, a large cat-like creature with a loud, howling voice, often said to sound like a woman crying out in pain. Oh yeah, uh, Stella mentioned those from her misadventure with the skunk den. Often linked to Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad. She hunted it down and, by wearing a bobcat mask, tricked it into using its own vile magic on itself, freeing the people of their region from its evil. Others say that the creature comes from the story of a woman who wore the pelt of a wild cat, to witness forbidden hunting rites. The hunters of her village gathered to perform the rites, and she watched in secret from underneath the cat's pelt, but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt and transformed into a creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her calls are those of great sadness, and serve as a warning to anyone who dares go against tradition. Well, that's grim. I like the first version better. Tommyknockers, enigmatic cave-dwelling creatures primarily known for causing mischief. Well, gosh, that sounds particularly relevant to uh, a town built around a coal mine. Tommyknockers originated in Cornish mythology, spreading to the United States when Cornish immigrants began working in Appalachian mines. They're named for the knocking that can be heard from seemingly within the walls before a cave-in. According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Others believe that the creatures take stolen hammers to the supports of mines and collapse them on whoever is unfortunate enough to still be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish, leprechaun-like beings, but some claim they are the spirits of dead miners, forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. Really? You know, I have read about Tommyknockers before, but I've never seen the ghost angle. Taily Poe, a small creature with a long tail and wide, yellow eyes. There was once a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night, after a particularly bad week of hunting, both their stomachs empty, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole, and before he could even figure out what it was, he'd drawn his gun and fired at the thing, his hunger guiding his actions. 
but it was quick and ran back through its hidey hole and out of sight, leaving only its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Guess this'll have to do, he said to his dog, and threw the tail in a pot to cook a soup. He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling them both up. That's quite a tail. The hunter crawled into bed, satisfied, and his dog curled up at his feet. He woke up to the sound of long nails scrabbling across wood. His dog was nowhere in sight, only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been. And in the gloom, he saw two big yellow eyes staring right at him. I want my taily po a high, hoarse voice croaked from the darkness. Go away, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him, still shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across hardwood accompanying its movements. I want my taily po the creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, the hunter squeaked, his voice catching in his throat with fear, but there was no dog to be seen. I want my taily po Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt from the darkness, long claws stretched out toward the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night. But the next morning, all that remained of the hunter, his dog, and his cabin was a chimney, standing alone in the woods. You know what? I have heard that story. But then again, uh, I also have a lot of family up in North Carolina. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the problem being, of course, that uh, if you've ever been to one of those old houses in North Carolina, they are basically moldering wood and then a brick fireplace, so... Yeah, yeah, that is usually what's left after a hundred or so years. But, you know, you gotta dress it up. That's just folk legends for you. Also, uh, who would know that this happened if the hunter and his dog both died? Did someone just overhear the Taily Poe bragging to his friends about it? Well, the uh, Tommy Knockers sound pretty promising, but I'm not so sure about the Wampus Cats or the... Um, Taily Po. I think I'm all done. Let's check in. All right, if we're going with what Kanika's mom told us last night, I think we can rule out any natural disasters as what brought the Ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents. Looks like our state has a history with those. What about y'all? Find anything? Before you can respond, a handsome black cat leaps onto the table. Cat. Stella quickly slams her book shut. Oh, hey, Pixel. You might want to close your book. He loves to rip up any paper he can find. Pixel, my dear friend. It's been too long. How have you been? Hungry. Did Stella bring the good stuff? <laughs> Don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Oh, yeah. Snack time. Mm -hmm. Sorry if Pixel's bothering y'all. Hopefully he hasn't gobbled up any of our books. He can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Yes, that is how cats work. Hey, Pixel, what do you think about the monsters we saw in the woods? I'm an indoor cat. I don't know nothing about no woods. I just hang out in the library, especially now that our house got haunted. Um. Wait. Your house is haunted? What? Hey, how'd you know? What? Pixel told me. 
I mean, he said it right in front of you guys. Redcon is either psychic, or he can talk to animals. It's a long story. No, no, you pretty much covered it. Just roll with it. Yeah, we've uh, been living in the library for a little bit. It's been great. Way more snacks. Way more scritches. Except sometimes there's too much scritches. Yeah, we've all been there. Sorry, buddy. Hold up. What kind of hunting are we talking about here? Unexplained noises? Objects appearing in strange and unfamiliar places? Oh, Oscar, don't get her hopes up like that. Ah, nothing like that. Sorry. The floor in my bedroom just keeps seeping blood, and I've seen a strange figure in the hallway a couple of times. Oh, is that all? Wait, you've seen a full-body apparition? Can I see it? Stella, it's probably just a dirty pipe or something that leaks blood and people. But what if it's a ghost? You know what, guys? I, I do think it's worth looking into. Y'all are more than welcome to check it out. Maybe tomorrow night? Yes, we'll be there. Yeah, that sounds like a fun way to spend an evening. Can't wait to get spooked by some creaky pipes. So, um... Why do you let a paper shredder freely wander a library? Why don't you mind your own business? Have you seen this little guy's face? How could I say no to this? That is a fair point. I did not consider that. Query withdrawn. You decide to leave Pixel B. The cat curls up on the table, fast asleep. Aww. All right, I'd better get back to shelving. Let me know if y'all need anything. Hmm. Right next to us, huh? Any, uh, luck with Rosalina? Haha, <laughs> nah, not yet. I knew a teen would be a handful, but I didn't think it'd happen overnight. I'll probably head out once you're all done and check in on our usual haunts. Okay, so he is definitely within earshot. Which means, um, we should probably be careful about what we say. We'll just start with the books. So, about the uh, coal mines here. Kanika visibly shudders. I get cold sweats just thinking about being in a place like that. I feel for the guys who work up there. I could never. Speak for yourself. I love a good crevasse. Really, Stella? Now you're just doing it on purpose. What, um... What happened after the mine collapse? The book just kind of glosses over that. There was a union for a little bit, but it didn't last. There's not a whole lot written about the past century here. Thank you, Oscar, for eavesdropping on our conversation. I appreciate that. Yeah, the uh, Scarlet Hollow Mine isn't exactly the most ethically run business. No offense or anything, I'm sure Tabby runs the mines better than Charles Shaw did. Still hasn't let the Union in, though. There's a reason she and I don't talk. Oh, is it just the one? That one thing? Yeah, that tracks. A Union-busting mine collapsed from poor working conditions. Color me shocked. Yeah, it's pretty awful. That's what that sculpture out front is for, commemorating all the men and children that died that day. Every kid in Scarlet Hollow learns about the collapse of 1918. Our teachers love to emphasize how many children they had working down there, probably to try to show us how good we have it or whatever. Low bar, if you ask me. You know, that could be what the Ditchlings are warning us about. Another collapse. Writing it down on my list of potential disasters. 
Yeesh, Stella, that's morbid. And besides, it was all Charles Shaw's fault. The labor market is way more strict now. There's no way you could get away with that kind of safety cutbacks he pulled. Uh, y'all don't actually think the mine is about to collapse, right? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think so. Who had me worried there for a second. I hate to give Tabitha any credit, but the mine is safer now than it was back then. Still, what a horrible thought. You never know. You guys uh, really seem to have a bone to pick with Charles Shaw. Yeah, that's what happens when someone directly causes a monumental disaster, especially in a small town like this. People tend to spit when they hear your name. He got run out of town on a rail, you know. Oh, is... That's what that picture is. Okay, now, now we have context. And that's not a figure of speech. Back then, they actually tied you to a rail and ran you out of town. There's a big mural of it over on the far wall. He got off easy, if you ask me. Yeah, I would say, as far as uh, frontier justice goes, that's pretty tame. It certainly beats being tarred and feathered, or lynched and hung. Though, I suppose that was the 1920s, so not quite frontier times. What if there's something toxic in the mines, poisoning the town? Wayne seems sick. Honestly, that sounds like one of the more plausible explanations we've had so far. What about the ditchlings? I don't know, maybe there's some sort of parasite down in the mines. Maybe it infected Wayne, and maybe Wayne infected the local wildlife. Huh, yeah, that could work. Not so sure about that. So, Silas Scarlet. Yeesh, I figured old money from the South wouldn't be great, but he, uh, sure did some things to get where he was, huh? That book is a perfect example of why you need to use multiple sources for your research, instead of trusting the first thing you read on a subject. Yep, dude was a monster. The mines made a lot of money during the Civil War, too, and you can probably guess which side a North Carolinian business owner would be working for. Sorry you related to him. Eh, I bet worse. Hmm. I get it. It must be one of those burial ground situations, right? Like in Poltergeist? Ha, <laughs> absolutely not. Even I know that that's just urban legend stuff. If stolen land was cursed, then all of North America is cursed. Wow, harsh. Yeah, Scarlet Hollow isn't special. So, uh, Appalachian folk monsters. Oh, hmm. All of these stories I read were about revenge. Huh, guess it's a popular subject for myths and urban legends. Well, that was not nearly the uh, revelation I was hoping it would be. You know... Wampus cats kind of sound like they could be mountain lions. Voice like a woman crying out, somewhere between person-sized and cat-sized. Definitely, they are 100% mountain lions. Kanika, you know there are no mountain lions up here. I thought you were supposed to be a skeptic. Oh, Stella, one of these days you'll trust us. But the myths are old, right? Mountain lions didn't go extinct in the Appalachians that long ago. Those legends just haven't died off yet. 
Almost every cryptid can be tracked down to either a hoax or someone getting confused about a perfectly normal animal. Sometimes both. Bigfoot, for instance, started as a prank. Then folks saw bears walking around on their hind legs and got freaked out. And now here we are. You'll eat those words when I get the first clear footage of a Bigfoot. If you manage that, I will print out a piece of paper that says Bigfoot isn't real and literally eat it. I promise. I'm holding you to it. Oh, and look at that. Another keen eye option. Interesting. Stella, there was literally a mountain lion in the ditchling nest last night. What? No, no way. Let me check the footage real quick. I really do need to turn off that overlay. Unfortunately, it uh, confuses the heck out of my recording software. Well, there ain't any alive ones in these parts. Good save, Stella. I guess that's the best we'll be able to do for her. Do you think Wayne is a Tommyknocker? Maybe he's the ghost of a dead miner. There's something seriously wrong with the guy, and we should definitely look into it, but I don't think he's a ghost. Yeah, ghosts tend to be tied to a specific place. Though, maybe he's haunting the whole town. He's not a ghost because ghosts aren't real. I've also seen him, like, touch stuff. Yeah, and uh, ghosts can only touch things if they're... Poltergeists. Check and mate. You know, my mom uh, used to tell me that Taily Poe story back when I was little. I can't believe I forgot that one. It scared me so bad I didn't eat soup for years. I thought a monster might try to dig it out of my stomach if I did. <laughs> I love that one. There's this old chimney in the woods that I used to think was the chimney from Taily Poe. The one that was left after the thing did whatever it did. Now I know it's just there because chimneys don't burn down, and wooden houses do. Yeah, yeah, that, that's about right. That doesn't mean it's not the chimney from Tally Poe. I've camped out there a couple of times and seen some pretty spooky stuff. Pretty spooky. Uh, yeah, I watched that video. You saw raccoons. You're going to get rabies one of these days, chasing after wildlife like that. What can I say? I like to live on the edge. Let's move on, shall we? You lean in quietly and whisper to Stella and Kanika. So, do you guys think there's like a, a cult here? Naked maniacs. Maybe uh, Officer Fredericks was onto something. I'm just saying, those cops were awfully suspicious last night. Really weird combination of being dismissive and trying to pin things on me. I don't know, it, it just feels like a cover up. Yeah, that was pretty bad, but I'm not sure they really have it in them to be part of a cult. Definitely. I don't think they're capable of putting in the effort. Ouch. Alright, looks like we have to make our next big decision now, so... Well, obviously they're steering us towards the mine, so... That is the next logical place to go. We've already been to the woods, we saw what it had to offer. Got a man killed. I think we should check out the mines. Between Wayne, the old collapse, and the fact that the whole town's practically been built around them, it seems like the smartest place to start. Good idea. There's an awful lot of mines-related stuff in my notes. We can poke around, find out if anyone's seen anything weird. Just to clarify, you two are suggesting we go to question some of the miners, right? We are not poking around unprepared in the actual mines, right? Right? 
right? Yeah, totally. 100%. I would never. We don't even have a good reason to go down there. Good. Let's keep it that way. You know how I feel about mines. I promise, Snakes. We're just going to question some of the miners. And if that questioning gives us a good reason to poke around, say, a cool abandoned coal mine, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You can cross that bridge when we come to it. I am not going underground. I'm just messing with you. We'll stick to the surface. Yeah, and hopefully we can find out what's wrong with Wayne while we're at it. Maybe uh, Tabitha can help us out. Ha, <laughs> no. I don't think she'd be super jazzed to see any of us snooping around the mines. I can't imagine what she'd do if we actually bothered her while she was trying to run the place. She does get a little grumpy when she's at work. She gets grumpier at work. I'm pretty sure Snark is that girl's baseline level of existence. Chatting over dinner might be a better way to get to know her. If you're okay eating boxed mac and cheese. We can sneak around the mines, no problem. I'll make sure to keep my eyes peeled for her. She won't even know we were there. <laughs> Look at us, going out on a caper together. I miss this. I missed it too. I mean, sure, it's not under the best circumstances, but I've been so wrapped up in running the store, I didn't realize how much I missed being able to hang out with you. Though, there is something missing. Reese. I really miss that dude. I can't believe how long it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? Nope. I've tried to plan stuff, but he's been too sick. I didn't realize it was getting so bad. That poor guy. You know, we could just pop over and surprise him. He seemed excited to meet Retcon. Maybe we'll finally get him to leave his little cave. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right, let's roll out. See ya, Oscar. We'll let you know if we run into Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep you posted. All right, folks, we are now at the 80 minute mark and my throat is uh, starting to get a bit rough. So I think we're at a pretty good breaking point. That aside, I think we're actually almost exactly halfway through the episode anyway, so it's as good a breaking point as any. Let's go ahead and hit the pause button for now. I will polish this up and get it online. And then we'll round things out with one more video to get us to the end of episode two. After that, it's a uh, five or six month wait until episode three. So plenty of time to work on the uh, other bigger projects that I normally focus on. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and we will pick up here next time as we meet the elusive Reese and check out the mines. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Scarlet Hollow, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description.